Hello, my fabulous fifth graders on this rainy day. I hope you are staying dry. This week we looked over clock fractions and you say, why? Why do we need clock fractions? We just went over money and money does a lot. It certainly does. But what's one third of a dollar? Hmm, not too easy to figure out, is it? You know what helps? Clocks, clocks can help, that's right. And so if you take off the little hand and the big hand of our clock, then it gives us this nice circle. Now I generally do not like using circles for fractions and you know that, but in this case, we can do it because we have this really cool app from Math Learning Center that uh, provides us with these perfectly done circles and they even will partition it for you if you know how to break it up. So let's get started. We want you to think about what you know. You know a lot about clocks. You see these numbers? What do they mean? Ah, yep, that's right. They tell us the hours, right? The hours in the day and then it doubles over for a.m. to p.m. So we got that. What about these little tick marks? Why do we have these little tick marks in here? Mm. Ah, because they represent minutes. We know that there are 60 minutes in an hour. That's a lot of lines. Thank goodness we don't have to draw them all. Um, but we know that if we partition this into 60 pieces and we keep them all, then we have one whole, right? We have that whole clock. As long as we don't share, we still have it all. Now, 60 is a big number and it is a lot of lines to draw. Here, we only partition it into 12s. And look at that, we have these nice big numbers to show us where to draw our lines. That's pretty cool. So, we have 12 equal pieces. We still have these little partitions in between, which are five each, and they tell us the minutes. So when we're doing our fractions, we can easily convert it to minutes, as long as we can remember that 1 12th is equal to five minutes. Now, let's look at a half. We always like to start with halves, we use them a lot. We have a half, we just draw a line straight down the center. And then let's color in one piece of it. And that shows us that we have half of it. And look, we can partition it into our twelfths. And if we do that, then we have six out of the 12 total pieces. So one half equals six twelfths. And if we really want to do it and go into these little tiny, tiny minutes, each minute we can, and we can partition it into 30 minutes for this. Or we can just say that we know that six twelfths, six times five gives us 30. So maybe we should just keep with that. Here we have thirds and we partition it into three equal pieces. It kind of looks like that Mercedes symbol. You have three of them. We want one of them, so we're gonna color in one out of the three. We have our one third, but look, we have these big, nice numbers next to it. We can partition it even um, into smaller pieces. The next size is just splitting it in half. If we do that, we get two sixths. Then we can partition those halves into half, and we have our two sixths into four twelfths looks good. If we wanted to go further and partition them into each individual minute, we could do 20 minutes, 20 out of 60. Let's move on. We have one fourth. We took the clock, partitioned it into four equal pieces. That gave us one out of the four pieces. Looks pretty good. This one we know pretty well. We have, um, but we have these lines here. We can partition it even further into three twelfths. Nice. And if we wanted to, we could partition each of these um, kind of like pizza slices into our five equal parts. We have 5, 10, 15 to get our 15 sixtieths to tell us that's 15 minutes. So far, so good. Let's go even further. We have one six. It's a little bit smaller. And that is um, one out of our six equally pieced uh, pieces. And we can further divide that in half and make that two twelfths. There we go. If we want to partition those into smaller, smaller pieces into our minutes, we could say that there's 10, which means there's 10 minutes in the hour. All right, let's work on a problem. We have Tomlin walked his dog two thirds of an hour on Monday and three fourths of an hour on Tuesday. How many total hours did Tomlin walk his dog on those two days? What kind of problem is this? Hmm. Let's think about that. As we think about it, 
let's get our fractions in order. We have two thirds of an hour on Monday. So let me take a clock and partition it into thirds. And then let me color in two of those three pieces. Looks good. All right, and then on Monday, we had three fourths of an hour. So let me get a clock and partition it into fourths. And then let me color in three of those four pieces. So far, so good. Now I just need to figure out what am I going to do with these two numbers? Hmm. Let's see. I want the total hours of both days. So what do you think it is? If you don't know, pause and think about it and then come back. Did you pause? Are you taking this seriously? I hope so. I am. So we want the total hours. We're going to add. I hope you got that. So we're going to add two thirds and three fourths. Easy oh. enough, right? We take two thirds, we take three fourths, and we get five thirds. Hmm. Thirds? Have you ever heard of thirds? I've never heard of thirds. It's not a real word. It's not a real thing. What's wrong? What do we need to do? Do you know? I hope you do. We've been going over this for a while. Yep. Let's not do this. Let's do what we know. We know we need to partition them into equal pieces. And what can we do? We can take our two-thirds and we can take our three-fourths and we can partition them into twelfths. And if we do that, then we have, oh, count our numbers. We have eight-twelfths over here. We have nine-twelfths over here. These numbers are very helpful on our clocks. And so then we can add them. We have eight plus nine is seventeen. Seventeen-twelfths. Look at that. It works. We have the same language. We want our denominators to be the same language. It might even help if you wrote the denominators out as words. So then we can have 17 twelfths. Twelfths is a funny word. Don't you agree? I think so. So we have this, but 17 twelfths is kind of odd in itself. Why? Remember? Yep, that's because it's an improper fraction. So how can we make this not an improper fraction? Change it to something that's a little bit more manageable. Well, we can take some of our pieces and bring them over to the other side. So I'm going to take some from my 9 twelfths, 1, 2, 3, 4, because I notice there's four empty spaces over here on my 8 twelfths, and I'm going to move them over. And when I do that, I have a hole. And then I have what's left? Yep, 5 twelfths. So now I have 1 and 5 twelfths as my answer. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's move on. Let's try a subtraction problem. Phyllis has one and five twelfths of cheese pizza left over from a party. Her children eat three fourths of the pizza for lunch. How much pizza is left for her? Well, we have one and five twelfths on one side and we have three fourths on the other side. What do you notice? That's right. The language is not the same. We have twelfths and we have fourths. So what do we need to do? Bam, we make them all twelfths. Looks pretty good. So now I have 17 twelfths over here. I count my 12 twelfths in my one hole plus my 5 twelfths gives me 17 twelfths. And I'm going to subtract 9 twelfths. Makes it a lot easier. All you have to do is 17 minus 9. Gives us our 8 twelfths. 8 twelfths is a great fraction. But what if they were bigger pieces? Would they still be twelfths? No, we could make it four, six. That looks pretty good. What if we didn't cut it except once? What would that be then? Ah, four, six is equal to two thirds. Well, great job, guys. So now what we're going to do is our question of the week. So let me know that you watch this by telling me, what is a thoroughs? I mentioned it in the middle of this video. So if you don't remember, you might want to rewind. If you can tell me on Monday, I'd appreciate it. So, see you then. Have a great weekend.